Right, thank you, um, Professor Chen. Um, can you hear my voice? <clears throat> yes, yes, it's okay. Right, can you, now, can you see the screen? Not yet. Okay, we can see the slides. Right, right. So I can start now, yeah? Right, um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you um, for the introduction. And also thank you uh, very much for the uh, conference organizer, especially Professor Tang and also Professor Chen, um, to invite me to give a talk today. So the, the topic of my presentation is um, exploring shear strength and isotropy of rooted soils. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will just give you a very brief background on how vegetation could possibly affect slope stability. So then I will um, uh, identify several key scientific questions uh, that we have been asking and try to define some objectives uh, to address the, the, the questions. And then I'll share with you some recent experimental findings on, um, uh, on the shear strength and isotropy of uh, with the soils, and then try to model it uh, theoretically. And then uh, based on what we learned from the experiments and the modeling, we will try to discuss, and, uh, uh, discuss uh, what is the implication to, to, uh, to the design of our slope stability. So um, vegetation is a kind of a nature-based solution that we can um, adopt to, to um, up, upgrade our slope uh, in a sustainable way. So um, uh, using this approach is environmentally, ecologically friendly. And of course, it is very pleasing to see it in urban areas. And it could, of course, en enhance the biodiversity and also the ecological restoration and have a lot of a carbon offset a bene ben beneficial effects. But from the engineering perspective, uh, perhaps vegetation can be used as an, um, uh, a tour to uh, upgrade our slopes. So mechanically speaking, the plant roots could reinforce the soil to grape the soil, in a, especially the shallow region, to improve the slope stability. And hydrologically, a uh, plant actually will transpire. And during this process, soil drying, which uh, in effect is to increase the soil matrix suction, could also increase the soil strength. So the talk today, I will focus mainly on a mechanical effect to explore further how that wood reinforcement uh, would, would be beneficially used, uh, uh, perhaps in the slope stabilization problems. So if you look at the slope stability design, um, we can possibly define a failure slip like this. So along this failure slip, actually, the major and minor principal stresses of the soil is rotating along this failure slip. And uh, the reinforcement effect by the root is actually depending on the relative orientation of the root and also the direction of the major principal stress. So in other words, if you have a given root distribution, depending on the position, the um, root reinforcement effect could be different because the major principal stresses is rotating along the slip surface. So we ask a question, what is the stress path effects? So as you can see in the screen, the, the failure slip here, we have different type of soil shearing mode. So very um, uh, commonly used method, direct shear box testing has been used for uh, evaluating the root effect. But if you look at the, the, the soil elements near the crest and near this toe, they're actually experiencing not the direct shear condition, but triaxial compression and triaxial extension. So what would be the effect of stress path on mechanical behavior of rooted soil? And do we have any generalized uh, failure criterion to describe the root effect on the slope uh, behavior? So we dig into the literature and look at what uh, have been uh, developed in the last um, uh, 20 or 30 years. So as I said, uh, most of the study are focusing on the direct shear box uh, 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 testing. So most of them found that the, the cohesion of the soil would be increased uh, because of the roots, but the friction angle remained largely unchanged. So don't only, only a few studies showing that the roots would change the, both the cohesion and uh, friction angle. So those are for the direct shear test. But we do have some literature looking at the triaxial behavior at compression and extension. So they do find some um, uh, changes in the friction angle and cohesion too, but not a lot of studies. So we still find uh, a lot of research gaps uh, uh, focusing on how the stress path would affect the shear strength parameters, uh, including the dilatancy of the rooted soil uh, 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 still remain unclear. So talking about the failure criteria, we have several models available to capture the root effect on reinforcement. The, one of the very famous models is the Wood and Warden's theory, which assumes all the root will break at the same time uh, during the direct shearing uh, mode. 
We do have also um, the fiber bundle model to improve the assumption for the woods model uh, by allowing the progressive failure of the roots rather than simultaneously failure of the roots. And um, if we allow for a more uh, expensive numerical simulation, there are some final element approach using PY technique that could uh, model the root soil interaction in, uh, 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 for, for slope stabilization purposes. So none of these models have um, the ability to capture the anisotropy, potential anisotropy problem for rooted soil because of the different orientation of the uh, major principal stress and also the root orientation. And there's no fear we developed uh, to address this um, anisotropy issue. So based on this, we developed uh, uh, several objectives. First of all, to study the effects of stress path, including compression and extension on the shearing behavior of rooted soils. And we try to compare um, the shear string parameters obtained from different stress paths. And based on experiments, we hope to develop a model to capture the shear string anisotropy of rooted soils. So we um, use the traction testing system available at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And uh, the soil we use is the local soil called completely decomposed granite, which basically is um, silty sand. And uh, we compact the soil to a degree of compaction of 80%, achieving this dry density, which is suitable for plant growth um, uh, uh, in, uh, in the urban area. So um, this is the dimension of the triaxial samples we have been using. So um, after testing, we open up the samples to look at the root distribution uh, using a scanner so that we can better inform our modeling in the later part. So we perform a very standard track, so test actually a drained and undrained shearing uh, under different uh, uh, confining pressure so that we can obtain the friction angle and cohesion. Okay, so um, we, we, we also compact the sample to different uh, initial density. Uh, we follow a very classic or typical test procedure for tractional testing. First, back, back pressure uh, saturation, and then drain consolidation to a given confining pressure. And then we shear at a relatively slow rate to achieve a drain condition. And also we uh, perform a drain shearing as well. So I'm not going into details on this testing program, but um, we uh, focus on different stress paths under different drainage conditions. So this uh, is the uh, typical results um, obtained from a normally consolidated source. Oh, by the way, in the table here, we also investigated different uh, over consolidation ratio as well. So the OC effect also uh, be covered. But today I will just focus on the normal consolidated behavior. So here is the stress strain curve, uh, the vectoric stress versus the vectoric strain of uh, bare soil and rooted soil, both in uh, normally consolidated condition. Okay, so what you are seeing here are a set of uh, stress ring curves for bare soil under compression. So if I superimpose the result from the rooted soil also under compression, quite surprisingly, you see the shear strength have been reduced by the roots. And uh, one reason is because we introduce, as the root growth in the soil, we introduce um, uh, uh, interfaces between soil and roots. And actually the interface friction between the root and soil is much lower than soil and soil interaction. So that's uh, explained perhaps uh, why the shear strength of the, 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 the rooted soil reduces along compression. Um, so uh, along the extension, this is the result uh, you can see for the bare soil. And if I, again, superimpose the uh, result from the extent, uh, sorry, the, um, uh, uh, the, the rooted soil case, and you will see uh, as, uh, apparently a very small increase in shear strength. Now, although uh, visually it looks a small increase, but if you focus and enlarge the scale here, the increase actually is quite a lot along extension. Uh, one thing, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention is the species we have been using is the fatifer. Fatifer species, which is a, a deep rooted species, which uh, their root orientation mainly grow vertically, just like one of the pictures I showed you earlier. They like to grow vertically rather than laterally. So um, that also is very important information when we study the anisotropy because the root orientation is, um, uh, has an effect uh, to the orientation of the major principal stress that affect the um, uh, anisotropy. So we observe quite an interesting result. So um, if you look at further on the shear strength parameters, which means the friction angle and cohesion. Now, if you look at the compression first, you can see that the, 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 the rooted soil has slightly lower friction angle than bare soil. So I already explained that because of the, in, uh, of the creation of many soil root interfaces. But if you look at the extension here, uh, the friction angle also reduced for the root by, the, by the rooted soil, but the cohesion increased very significantly. You can see from zero for the bare soil to something like 22 kPa 
for rooted soil in the extension, right? And so, so um, that's what I just mentioned about the conclusion from these uh, shear strength parameters. So in other words, the rooted soil behavior is stress path dependent. In other words, it's anisotropic. So to capture these um, experimental findings, we try to develop a generalized failure criterion to capture this um, uh, interesting behavior. Now, in our experiments, we didn't observe any uh, breakage of roots. So we couldn't use um, the philosophy or the assumptions made by the previous uh, root reinforcement model by Woos, by the uh, fiber bundle model. So we have to assume all roots were not broken during the shearing. And one further assumption we need to make is the stress and strain are coaxial during failure. And uh, the root effects on the soil and the uh, can be described by an equivalent microstructure root network tensor. So I will introduce that later. Uh, and another important assumptions we made is the cohesion and friction angle are independent of confining pressure. Now, I understand this is, uh, I acknowledge this is uh, quite a simplified uh, uh, um, uh, assumptions, but then uh, it's a very first model to develop. So we believe this would be uh, easier or convenient for the development of our models. So um, with all these assumptions, we try to um, define two fabric tensor. So this tensor here, I, I wouldn't go into the details of the mathematics, but it is to capture the soil microstructure without any roots, just on the soil structure itself for the, for the bare soil. Then we propose a new uh, uh, fiber anisotropy for root network to describe the root distribution. So as you can see, the mathematical form is similar or actually the same as the bare soil fabric tensor, but using different parameters to capture the um, uh, anisotropy or the microstructure because of the root uh, network development. Okay, so we do have a lot of uh, parameters, the eigenvalues, the mean values of the eigenvalues of the defectorial part of this matrix. So those are the ne necessary parameters to, to need to be calibrated for the modeling. So um, talking about the failure criteria, we adopted this uh, Masuoka and Nakai um, isotropic, um, um, uh, 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 the, the spatially mobilized plane model. So this equation is to describe an isotropic soil, uh, uh, talking about the stress ratio, a shear stress, and a normal stress. So what we did here is to uh, modify this isotropic failure criterion to be anisotropic using Kong et al. 2013 approach, basically is to project the microstructure tensor onto the direction of the generalized loading direction in a uh, in in that particular form. So, in other words, you can see this eta, which is a um, uh, an isotropic parameter to describe the soil microstructure. So, we can further break it down using uh, the, the previous uh, matrix I showed you, like this. So, what we did further here is to propose another uh, an isotropic parameter for rooted soil. So if you compare that two equations, I have another additional term there to describe the effects of root network. Okay, so, so with this anisotropic parameter, we can then um, uh, capture the anisotropy in this SMP model. Okay, however, as I showed you earlier, the, the root soil is cohesive. Now, this uh, Masuoka and Nakai failure criteria is for frictional material without any cohesion. It couldn't be perfectly modeled our root soil because it is cohesive. Uh, especially in the extension uh, uh, path. So that's why we adopted, uh, 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 we further expanded the, the formulation using the Masuoka at L 1990s model, co uh, considering cohesive soil. So you can see the mathematical form is quite similar. Actually, it's just a transformed stress tensor uh, so that the mathematically it is the same, but we have an additional term called bonding stress to capture the cohesion effect. Okay, so um, we then again modify this uh, bonding stress by taking into account the root effect uh, on the anisotropy to the soil. So these two red equations over there are the new development considering the root effect on the, uh, on the isotropic consideration of the soil microstructure, but also the anisotropy from the root network for the bonding stress. So now we have the mathematical model to describe the anisotropy of rooted soils. So after calibration against our triaxial test data, so on the right-hand side, you can see this is a divectoric plane of um, uh, the failure envelope uh, for different type of soil, the bare soil and also the NC rooted soil and OCR, uh, OC uh, rooted soil, taking into account anisotropy. So you can see here, the, the failure envelope for the rooted soil is always bigger than bare soil. That makes sense because the, the soil is good, the root is reinforcing the soil, right? Uh, but interestingly, you can see in these two planes, actually the root reinforcement is more important than other planes. 
So um, as an uh, as an implication, so as an engineer, you want to put your plant near the region where you have the stress path following uh, 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 section three and four, so that the maximum uh, root enforcement can be achieved. So um, so. One important information um, uh, I want to highlight here uh, in the literature, we found a direct shear box scenario. The, the friction angle didn't change much. That makes sense from our modeling because you can see the, the increase in friction angle here is only led to in this, direct, uh, in this section one, which represents the direct shear uh, stress path. But if you look at the uh, triaxial and extension path, the increase in friction angle uh, or the change in friction angle and the change in cohesion are much larger. So our model also can capture the direct shear uh, loading condition. So this is uh, could be quite generalized uh, envelope for uh, rooted soil. Dr. Long, you have four more minutes. Right. Okay. So that would be my two last. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yep. Right. So we 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 found the act can also affect the friction angle, not only the cohesion as uh, found uh, typically found in the literature. And uh, evidently, root reinforcement effect is anisotropic and path dependent. Um, for for deep rooted soils, uh, for deep rooted species like the vetifer, we were investigating um, soil reinforcement along the compression curve was much less than that along the extension curve because the major principal stress in the compression almost parallel to the root orientation for the vetifer. But if you have an extension, they are perpendicular to each other, so the root, root reinforcement effect will be much more significant, right? So that demonstrates the anisotropic effect. So um, yeah, root can mobilize the tensile strength much better along the extension path. So coming back to the, our engineering problem, what one advice you, you, we could take is uh, assuming friction angle to be unchanged by root may not be always true, depending on where the slip position we are talking about. For direct shear position, yes, maybe you can assume zero and uh, nothing changed in the friction angle. But for the um, crest and the toe, the friction angle could have been changed by the root. And if you select a species with a deep rooted species, uh, we could we would advise you to put it near the slope toe because at that position, extension is the more preferred uh, failure mode. So the reinforcement will be more significant. So by the same token, if you have a laterally rooted species, you could put it near the uh, slope crest because at that position, you will have a perpendicular um, uh, direction between the um, uh, major principal stress and also root orientation. That would give you the highest root reinforcement effect. So strategically, we shouldn't put one only one species along the slope for slopes uh, for um, soil bioengineering applications. We should be smartly uh, considering soil mechanics to uh, uh, arrange our species uh, uh, to maximize the slope stability effect. So um, all what I've been just talking are based on these three publications. And um, so they are all already published. So if you're interested, um, you are more, more than welcome to take a look. And I also acknowledge uh, my student, uh, uh, Ali Appa, who have uh, produced all this very interesting work um, uh, for this presentation. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much. And I welcome any discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Leung, for giving us such a wonderful talk. And we still have one minute, maybe for our audience, do you have questions? Want to ask Dr. Leung? And it's a, such a good chance. Do you have some questions? Okay. Well, I have one question. Yes. Here. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering whether, where, where you consider the root effect, where you consider uh, it's a uh, I mean, a uh, real life one or uh, just a dead root? Will you consider the effect? Well, uh, uh, the root is alive. Uh, we grow it in our nursery for six months and then we chop you know, the top part and then move it back to the lab for, for testing. Uh, and all these tests are fully saturated. So we didn't consider any suction effects yet. 